Let's talk about the last year. What has the last year been like for you? Um, surreal and difficult. Um, every day is different. Is we have our highs and lows. Um, it's um, this has been the worst year of my life. I've experienced, uh, of course, the, the loss of my son was very, very uh, traumatic for me. And sometimes I don't even believe that Jelani is gone. I, I wake up sometimes thinking I still need to go look for him. And then on top of that, we lost his dad. And um, we're just coming We've just experienced a lot of firsts, you know. His first birthday without him. Um, this Friday is their dad's birthday, so it's it's just been a, a a very it's been a difficult year for me as their mother, and for me personally, just me, you know, just grabbing. You know, people tell me that. Um, um, I'm blessed. And I thought about this and I was talking to my friend um, and I told her, I do, I do feel blessed. I mean, I'm blessed to see another day. I'm blessed that my kids are here. But at the same time, I'm so broken. And I don't know if that makes sense to a lot of people, but that's the only way I can describe how I'm feeling right now. So I'm, I try my best to just keep going because life just going to keep happening, you know, different stuff happens. But this has been a very difficult year. Your other children as well, like you said, how many other children and how are they handling everything? Um, I have a total of five children all together. Jelani was the fourth child, the youngest boy. I have two daughters and two sons, Dakar, DeAndre, Save Angel, uh, Jelani, Save DeAndre, Dakar, Zaina, and Save. Um, they are my strength, and my kids are incredibly strong. I thank God for them daily because this it's because of them that um, when I feel like I'm spiraling and going crazy, they it's them that keep me sane. It's them that keep me going. They are my strength, and I thank God for them because I don't even know what I would do without them. And uh, they're trying to be strong for me, and I'm trying to be strong for them. But they, and I thank God that they all have each other because um, all my kids are really close. Um, and so... Uh, they all are there for each other, each one of them. And they handle all of this differently. But because they're so close to each other, each one of them can balance each other out. When I, when they know that I don't even have the energy to um, handle the stuff, I got Dakara, who is, Jelani names her Little Carmen, and she definitely steps up the plate and be, and she is Little Carmen. She keeps everybody in order. I got um, DeAndre. He's the, he thinks he's the, the daddy of everybody. He told me that he raised Jelani and Zayn. I'm looking like him. Like, boy, they got a daddy and a mama that raised them. But um, he's always checking, always making sure I'm okay. He, you know, Jelani was my bill collector. Now, DeAndre is, he's like my drill sergeant. He just wants to call me all day long. Mama, are you okay? Mama, are you doing this? Then I got Zaina, who is just my little listener. You know, she's, um, she doesn't say much until it's time for her to say it. But in the meantime, she will listen. She's the, she's the calm storm out of all of them, you know. Then Save, he's... That one right there, he he's gonna make sure everybody is taken care of. He's he he think he is the man. <laughs> so I wouldn't trade none of them. They all, like I said, they all balance each other out and they all take care of each other. I thank God for their closeness.
because sometimes it's a lot for me. So I thank God for them, that they love on each other. They get each other together. They support each other. They're, they're there for each other. And I'm so grateful for that. Can you take me back to September 4th of 2021? Well, on September 4th, um, we got the news that they found a body. They identified that body as Jelani. Um, they didn't know if it was him because the body was so severely decomposed. Um, they didn't tell me anything. They didn't tell me about the clothing because they told me initially that they couldn't identify the clothing because it was so um, murky. The water had been murky. So they couldn't tell me about the white um, T-shirt that the body had on. They couldn't tell me the color of the shorts. But ironically, they knew all of this stuff. Um, so September 4th, I sat in that room and I was just praying to God. OK, they got a body, but we don't know if this is my child. I sat in that room and I listened to them. And. Um, I just kept believing for the best. I just kept believing that Jelani was somewhere and I was going to find him. And this body that they had didn't belong to me. I, um, so I continued on looking for my son. I, um, I didn't leave Peru that day until after six o'clock. Because the police had told me that the cameras at the YMCA at the, um, where the car was found, that those cameras didn't work. Those cameras did work. And I went to that YMCA, and me and my family, my kids, Jelani's dad, my mom, all of us were there. We watched those cameras. And on the day um, that Jelani's car could have possibly been placed there. There was another vehicle that we seen on the camera. We um, we recorded it with our phones. I had my son go buy a jump drive to record the video so that we can give it to the police. We did that on September 4th. We did that. When I met with the police this year in February, I was told by the Peru police department, the detective from the Peru, Peru police department, they didn't follow up with that video until January 13th of 2022. That, again, I'm sitting there, my son went missing on, the last time he was seen alive was August 24th. They found his car on August the 26th. Um, they found this body on September 4th. This video was turned over to them. This video was turned over to them in September on the 4th. September 23rd was when they identified the body as Jelani. September 24th was when they told me that they're going to start back over to day one. So that's a whole month. A whole month done passed. They didn't, they didn't conduct a search party. Every search party that happened, I did that. Um, so that, when, as I think back on that day, because I've been thinking about a lot of stuff, um, and I fought myself for some of the things because on um, the 26th when they found the car and we stood in that parking lot that night or that early morning and I asked them, well, what are we gonna do next? Are we gonna look in the water? Where are we gonna go? And Detective Paul Jones from Bloomington told me, Carmen, we don't believe that Jelani's in Peru. How did he come up with that? I don't know, but that's what they told me. And they told me that tomorrow, which was that Friday, <sighs> oh, 
that they would um they would still be searching and they would be looking and they would get in touch with me just to sit still and wait to hear from them. And I did that Friday. I didn't do anything on that Friday. I didn't go anywhere. I sat in that living room and I waited for them to call me. And um, he called me at 4.30 that Friday and told me that, um, cause by this time I'm looking, we're searching, wanting to look at Jelani phone records, trying to find out stuff and everything. And so I'm trying to contact um, the Apple to see if they could help me. And he contacted me at 4.30. Because I'm looking up, he's telling me that, but well, we can't get in contact with Apple and we got to fill out this and we got to fill out that. Well, I'm trying to make moves. I'm finding, I'm, I have friends that work for Apple. And then I found out when one of my friends is actually on the board with the um, CEO of the, um, some high department with Apple. So he got in touch with them for me. I was making moves more than the police. And so that's how I even got direct communication with the people from Apple because of people that I knew. And when he called me at 4.30 and he told me that if he didn't hear anything else about the phone and he didn't get any information, that I wouldn't hear from him until Monday. So that guy, I sat there for them like 10 seconds and I was like, today is Friday. So Saturday and Sunday, you mean I'm just supposed to just wait till Monday? Who's going to be looking for Jelani? He told me they didn't have the manpower. So instantly I said, I got to do something. So that's when I conducted my first search was that next day. Because who sits around and waits? No. I couldn't wait. And no police showed up, and nobody was there with us except for the people who volunteered, me and my family and people that came out and volunteered. There was no media there. There was nobody there helping us. And so uh, September 4th, um, <clears throat> I didn't listen to them. I didn't, they didn't tell me that that was Jelani. I didn't want to believe that was Jelani because in my mind, Jelani could swim. I knew he could swim. I took him to swim classes. He was on the swim team. He went to swim. He was going to swim at the Y all the time. He was working out. So I didn't believe that was my baby. As we get into the investigation, you're bringing that up. So based on, like you said, he knew how to swim. You had seen him swim. The LaSalle County Coroner's report saying that the cause of death, ruling the cause of death, is a drowning. Where does that leave you as a mother, as his mother? With a whole bunch of questions. Because I wanted to know, okay, you said he drowned. I watch movies, you know, this, this, and it's like I'm living a movie, okay? So I'm watching this movie and I see people drowning somebody, right? Somebody that is conscious that can, that can swim, they're not gonna let nobody drown them. You never hear about that. So I wanted to know, like, did you find marks on Jelani? Did you do all of this? There's something wrong with this body. Could you tell me anything about this body? The only thing they could tell me was that this body didn't have teeth. My son, Jelani was the, out of my five kids, I took them to the dentist. I have insurance. Jelani never had cavities. Jelani had good, strong teeth. The only thing was wrong with Jelani's teeth, he was playing around one day and he chipped his front tooth. Wouldn't even go outside until I had to make him an appointment to get that tooth fixed. He chipped it again when he was away at school. He got it fixed immediately. So Jelani's teeth were strong. It's just that one front tooth. So when they tell me this body was missing teeth, um, that there was fish and turtle activity, that the eye sockets wasn't there, and um, 
genitalia flayed and me thinking about my son like I just I wanted I wanted Jelani back I did not want to believe that this is my child so I wanted them to show me I wanted them to prove to me show me something how do somebody drown when they know how to swim you know when they're strong and healthy how do they drown without somebody doing something to them and then when they kept on implying that he did this to himself that made me angry implying that um Something was wrong with him that he had pressure on him from going to grad school. And I had to tell them, Jelani was in undergrad. And when he was in undergrad, Jelani was involved in so many things. He was involved in 100 collegiate black men, which required his GPA to be at a certain level, which he exceeded. While he was involved with that, he was involved in house arrest, where he had to try out and be online. While he was involved in all of that, he went online to be a Q. While he was involved with that, he was volunteering at hospitals because of the program that he was in. He came from a strong family. He done seen pressure. He seen me dealing with his dad who had coded on us three times. That didn't even, because I'm strong, my kids were strong. So for them to sit up there and try to convince me something was wrong with my child who had never shown any signs of depression, had never had any kind of mental breakdowns, who had never had any kind of trouble that would indicate that they were suffering anything that dealt with anything that would want them to take his life. Absolutely not. You, you might can convince yourself of that. You could never convince me. And then they couldn't even make sense to me. How did one who's not familiar with Peru, because I never heard of Peru. I thought Peru was in another country, okay? Never had heard of Peru. And then when I find out that Peru only had 1% black people, I'm not racist, I'm not prejudiced, but Jelani wasn't down there like that. I know my kids, okay? He wasn't down there like that. He has white friends, but he wasn't He wasn't there because he would have told me about somebody. He would have told me that he went somewhere like that. We never had those conversations. Um, and to know that his car was found, where it was found at, wouldn't nobody know about that area but somebody that's familiar with that area, number one. Then for him to, for them to imply that they that he took off his license plate. So you telling me he would park his car, take off his license plate, and then walk this tall black boy walking through your neighborhoods that are primarily white people, and you guys don't notice him. Then he has to walk through an industrial area to get to the river. And now you're telling me no cameras nowhere seen him, not anybody's home cameras, not the business cameras. Then his, his wallet is found in somebody's yard. His lanyard is found, you know, feet away from where the body was found. Then miraculously, after they done had this search on September 4th, a mile up the river, two girls can go walking and ask people where was where was the body found and they can find clothing. None of that makes sense to me. It shouldn't make sense to anybody. It shouldn't even make sense to you listening to it. It shouldn't even make sense to them coming out for it to come out their mouth to relay it to me, to think that I was a dummy and to believe anything like that. So to try to tell me that my son did something to himself was the last thing. They, they would have been better off telling me 
Then Jelani seen a psychic and this lady made him disappear. Some uh, some bull crap like that. They couldn't. Com nobody can convince me Jelani did this to himself. I mean, and people that commit suicide, they want you to know. They leave notes. Or they there's some kind of indication that they want to hurt themselves. None of this has ever happened with my child. Is there anything that the FBI, Bloomington Police, Peru Police, LaSalle County, anything that any of those agencies could say to you that could bring you even an ounce of, of closure or peace or anything in any regard? That they've arrested somebody? That they found out? Some information that leads to an arrest? They know what happened to him? That's the only thing that could bring me closure. I don't know why my son is in six feet under the ground. I didn't get to see him. I did not get to look at him. So I don't have any closure. And they've apologized for what they didn't do. None of that is sufficient for me. None of that brings me any kind of peace or solace or makes me feel better. You know, I was speaking to um, um, and he said to me, Carmen, we've made mistakes. The police agency made mistakes. What can we tell you besides that we're sorry that we made mistakes? <laughs> and I'm listening to him. The real Carmen, I mean, without being um, diplomatic and trying to be um, nice and everything, she listens and she's just like, are you serious? I really want to just tell him off. Because how could you tell? How could you even form your lips to tell me that you made mistakes? Like, you didn't care about my child. That's basically what you're telling me. These are people who, they volunteer to do this work. To protect and serve. They did me a disservice. They didn't serve me. They didn't serve my family. And now all you want to do is tell me that you made a mistake? How do I know that that mistake, that at some point Jelani was not alive, but because of your mistake, we didn't find him? Was I supposed to do your job? No, I just told Sarah today. Sarah is the, um, she's my contact person for the Jelani, the, the Jelani Day Joint Task Force. Through Bloomington, PD. Now, this is from Peru. She's from Peru. Um, 